Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. You know, in the thick of combat as friend and foe grapple for supremacy in the drifts of gun smoke on unfamiliar ground, split-second life and death command decisions are part of leadership. For Emery Fisk Best, the officer pictured here, the colonel of the 23rd Georgia Infantry, his actions at the Battle of Chancellorsville cost him everything. Here's the story. A native of Maryland and the son of a wealthy minister, Best grew up in Baltimore and moved with his family, he was a young man, to Northwest Georgia. His father moved them to an estate called Forest Home, where about 20 enslaved people worked the land and the house. Best attended some of the best schools, including Lebanon College in Tennessee, and embarked on a law career. Probably would have stayed in law in Georgia had the war not intervened. But it did, and when it came, he joined his local militia company, the Floyd Spring Guards, becoming their first lieutenant. The guards became Company C of the 23rd Georgia Infantry, and the brand spanking new regiment headed to Virginia to fight. By the end of 1861, Best had proved himself a leader, advancing to major of the regiment, and following the 1862 Peninsula Campaign, he received a promotion to lieutenant colonel and second command of the 23rd. In this capacity, he served during the Antietam campaign, which found the regiment engaged at South Mountain and in the vicinity of the cornfield at Antietam. That was a rough fight. The colonel of the 23rd, William P. Barkley, was killed in action. Best, second in command, now advancing to colonel, suffered a wound and fell into enemy hands for just a couple of weeks. He returned to his regiment and advanced to become the new colonel. That was in November of 1862. The following year at Chancellorsville, U.S. forces caught the Georgians off guard during the early afternoon of May 2nd, 1863, after Union skirmishers drove Best's advance line back and word came that he was at risk of being flanked Best ordered his men to retire a short distance and took up a new position along a railroad cut. Now, Best describes what happened next in his after-action report. Quote, After forming in the railroad cut, I received orders from General James J. Archer, who had arrived and taken command, to hold my position until he ordered me to leave. I sent word to General Archer that I could hold my position if my flanks were protected, especially my left. About 30 minutes afterward, during which time there was a spirited duel between a battery of Colonel J.T. Brown's regiment and the enemy's battery on nearby Furnace Hill, General Archer withdrew his skirmishers from my left. He then sent me orders by a courier to move out quickly but I did not receive the order to leave until the enemy had taken the railroad cut on my left and nearly surrounded me. I ordered the regiment to fall back, but it was too late to bring out the regiment, except those that escaped after the enemy closed upon us. As far as I've been able to ascertain, my loss in prisoners was 26 officers and 250 enlisted men. This includes my killed and wounded, how many of either I am not able to state, end quote. He lost his entire regiment except for himself and about 40 members of the regiment who managed to get out of the railroad cut and make their way to safety. The benefit of hindsight, it better, better might have been better for best if he had not made it out of the railroad cut. His escape was interpreted as cowardice by some men who were unhappy with his overall leadership, and it appeared they held a grudge for quite a while. 
Best was hauled before a court martial for his combined actions of cowardice at Sharpsburg and Tetum, where he was wounded and captured, and Chancellorsville. He endured a drawn-out trial that lasted over a year. They were, they were unable to provo- pro- prove any wrongdoing during the Antietam campaign, but they did hold him accountable for Chancellorsville. If you look at his trial record, you'll find this note. Quote, The weight of evidence shows that Colonel Best left the whole of his command in the railroad cut while they were engaging the enemy. Had he received the command on which he relies for his defense, that was the command that he explained was by the courier and delayed his being able to leave because it came too late. Had he received the command on which he relies for his defense, he has not proved that he obeyed it. Running out of the cut with a few of his men and making the best of his way to the rear was not carrying out the instructions communicated to him by the courier. It was also his duty to have seen that his men followed him. And he, seeking his own safety at such a time, making no further thoughts for his command, prove him unqualified for the position he held in the Confederate States Army. End quote. In the end, he was cashiered and left the army in disgrace, his reputation forever tarnished. Eventually, perhaps ironically, Best settled in Washington, D.C., where he worked as a lawyer for the Department of the Interior of the government that he turned against in 1861. He died in 1912 after suffering a stroke at his office desk. Now, here's the parting shot. Ten years before his death, one of his captains, fellow captains in the 23rd, Captain William G. L. Butt, defended Bust in a, Best in a statement he made in the Atlanta Journal. Here's that statement. After entering the cut, I approached the colonel, Colonel Best, and we had exchanged a few words when a courier dashed up to where we were standing and said to the colonel it was ordered by some general that he should get his men out of there as best he could. We could all see the danger in being captured if we remained. The colonel's order to me and to the officer in command of the adjoining company was to get our men out the best we could and to pass the order down the line. This was done. The colonel left, and I followed with a portion of my company and a few from other companies, about 40 in all. Those that remained were captured. In making our exit, we were exposed to the fire of the enemy from front and flank, and if I ever experienced a closer call, I am not aware of it. The Federals were so near, the entire command could not have escaped, and had all been so disposed. Charges were preferred against the colonel, and he was cashiered for not remaining with his command and being captured with them. Now, that may be in in accord with military discipline, but I will take the risk in running this gauntlet before exposing my carcass in such prisons as Rock Island and Fort Delaware in time of war. So there you have it. The story of Colonel Emery Fisk Best from Maryland, moved to Georgia, became the commander of the 23rd Georgia Infantry, performed well by all accounts at South Mountain and Antietam, and got himself in a bit of a pickle at Chancellorsville, arguably not his own fault, but paid the ultimate price, losing his command and his reputation by a court-martial. Thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail.